Let's continue our study of stoichiometry, the quantitative aspects of chemical reactions. You saw in the previous podcast that the balanced equation represents moles of reactants and products. And you can take moles of any reactant or product. In this case, we'll take the lead nitrate and solve for any product or reactant. Again, we could use um, the fact that one mole of lead nitrate produces one mole of lead 2 iodide. And we can see that two moles of lead 2 nitrate produces two moles of lead 2 iodide. But we often don't want just to solve from moles to moles. So I'm going to give you the path to turning grams of reactant or product into grams of reactant or product. The general pathway is to take the mass of your reactant and convert that to moles of reactant, of course, using the molar mass of that substance. Once you have converted the mass of that reactant to moles of reactant, you then will convert moles of reactant into moles of product. And to do that, you use what we've been using, the mole ratio. The coefficients in the balanced equation between the reactant of interest and the product of interest will be compared. Once you have moles of product, you then simply convert that back to mass of product using, again, the molar mass of that particular product. And your stoichiometry problems, in general, always follow this plan. So let's look at a reaction. If we have 454 grams of ammonium nitrate and it decomposes, we want to know how many grams of water are formed in this reaction. The first thing you have to do is to write a balanced equation to represent the reaction. Without a balanced equation, you cannot do your stoichiometry calculations. So you've got your ammonium nitrate decomposing to form two products. The product we're interested in is the water. So once you have your balanced equation, your next step is to convert the mass of the reactant, the ammonium nitrate, to moles. So we had 454 grams of ammonium nitrate. The molar mass of ammonium nitrate is 80.04 grams. So 80.04 grams of ammonium nitrate in one mole. This gives us moles of our starting reactant. Our next step is to convert these moles of ammonium nitrate into moles of the product that we're interested in, the water. And we do that by using the coefficients in the balanced equation and the mole ratio. Looking at the equation, you can see one mole of ammonium nitrate produces two moles of water. So we're going to set up our mole ratio, getting rid of the ammonium nitrate and moving to the product that we're interested in, the water. So we would take our moles of ammonium nitrate from our previous calculation and convert it to moles of water using the mole ratio. This would give us 11.4 moles of water produced. Our final step is simply to convert that mole back to grams using the molar mass of the product. The product is water. Its molar mass is 18 grams per mole. So moles of water to grams of water give us our final answer of 204 grams of water. This 204 grams is our theoretical yield of water. This is the yield we get if nothing goes wrong in lab. And we can calculate this prior to even going into lab by using our method of stoichiometry. Of course, we normally would not break this down to all those steps. We would do it in one step, taking, again, our 454 grams of ammonium nitrate is what we're starting with. And we're solving for how many grams of water. So 454 grams, this is our molar mass 
of our ammonium nitrate, convert to moles, convert moles of ammonium nitrate to moles of water using the mole ratio, and then use the molar mass of water to convert back to 204 grams of water. Notice grams of ammonium nitrate cancel, moles of ammonium nitrate cancel, moles of water cancel, leaving us with our final unit, grams of water. And again, this would be our theoretical yield. Let's look at another reaction. We have a word problem. It says calcium metal, calcium metal reacts with water, this is our water, to form hydrogen gas. How many grams of calcium will we need to make 100 grams of hydrogen gas? Again, before we can do any stoichiometry, we need to write a balanced equation. Calcium reacts with water to produce hydrogen gas and calcium hydroxide. Even though we're only interested in the hydrogen gas in this reaction, we need to write a completely balanced equation, including all reactants and products. Once we have our balanced equation, it's nice to clarify what we're looking for. This is what we're starting with. We have 100 grams of hydrogen that we're trying to produce. This is what we're looking for. How many grams of calcium will we need to add to get that? So following our pattern, taking our 100 grams of hydrogen gas, we will first convert that to moles, 2 grams of hydrogen, molar mass, and 1 mole of hydrogen. Then we use the mole ratio between hydrogen and calcium, which again is 1 to 1. But we must do this step in order to, we have converted grams to moles of hydrogen. We now need to get to moles of calcium. Even though the mole ratio is 1 to 1, we need to show that. And then our final step will be simply to convert the moles of calcium back to grams of calcium. And this, of course, is the molar mass of calcium from the periodic table. Putting that into our calculator gives us our theoretical yield of 2,004 grams. So 2,004 grams of calcium is needed to produce 100 grams of hydrogen. As with any stoichiometry problem, we can be given any reactant or product and solve for any of the remaining substances. When you're doing your stoichiometry, you want to make sure you're clear on what values you are getting. Your theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that can be formed. This is what you calculate doing your stoich calculations. Your actual yield is what you get when you actually go into lab. And usually your actual yield is somewhat less than your theoretical yield. There are always errors in lab, and this will affect your percent yield. Your percent yield is a comparison between the actual yield and what you theoretically calculated. To calculate your percent yield, it's quite simple. You take your actual yield, what you got in lab, and your theoretical yield, which is what you calculated using your stoichiometry. So what you got in lab over what you should have been able to produce theoretically times 100 gives you your percent yield. Your percent yield is how correct you are okay, in achieving your theoretical yield. So an example problem, a student produces only 10 grams of product when the theoretical amount of product was calculated to be 11.25 grams. What is the student's percent yield? Again, the student produced 10 grams. He theoretically should have produced 11.25 grams. So his percent will be the 10 divided by the 11.25, giving him a percent yield of about 89 percent. 